Hello, everyone. My name is Clayton Graham. I'm the chair of the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Indiana Holiday Commission. And on behalf of the commission, I am honored to welcome you to the 15th annual Holocaust Day of Remembrance. This year's program is titled Honoring the Rescuers, a fitting theme as we embark on the National Holocaust Week of Remembrance. I'd like to recognize Superintendent Linda Ritz, Cheryl Anderson from Senator Joe Donnelly's office, <laughs> members of the Indiana General Assembly, <laughs> and all other appointed, elected, honored guests and friends. Thank you for taking time to remember the victims of the tragic period known as the Holocaust. I also want to welcome the young people in the audience today who have participated in the Youth Summit beginning at 9.30 a.m. this morning. We hope that you've gained a better understanding of the importance of observing one of the most horrific periods the world has ever seen. I want to thank our sponsors, the Indiana Civil Rights Commission, the Indianapolis Jewish Relations Council, and the Indianapolis Bureau of Jewish Education. We are truly thankful for your support. Without you, this program would not be possible. At this time, I would like to bring to the stage Mr. Jamal Smith, Executive Director of the Indiana Civil Rights Commission, to offer greetings. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We got a lot of young people in here. I figured I'd get a better response than that. Again, my name is Jamal Smith, and I am the executive director of the Indiana Civil Rights Commission. Um, and first of all, I'd like to thank uh, the Honorable Clayton Graham, who is the chair of the MLK Commission, whose charge it is to make sure that uh, this event, along with the MLK Commission uh, event that's held in January, takes place. So. If I could have uh, any of our representatives from the MLK Commission who are present today to please stand along with Chairman Graham, uh, Graham so we can give him a round of applause, please do. So we can thank you guys for the work that you guys do. Uh, I'd also be remiss if I didn't acknowledge uh, the staff, and I'm going to stand up on this if you guys don't mind. I'm really only six feet tall, but you know when I played ball in college, I, was, I envied the guys who were six four and six five. So. Uh, this is this is fitting. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't acknowledge uh, the staff of the Indiana Civil Rights Commission because they put a lot of hard work into making sure these events take take place. So uh, if and I, that's too uncomfortable. If the staff of the Indiana Civil Rights Commission wouldn't mind raising your hands so that we can acknowledge you guys, a round of applause. I'm so pleased that uh, each and every one of you guys have taken time, and, and, and the last bit of recognition that I would like to give, and it's an echo of what Chairman Graham uh, uh, said before, and it's to acknowledge all of the young people that we have here today, and specifically all of the teachers and administrators that took the time to make sure that the young folks were able uh, to attend. So, especially those of you guys who consider yourself young folks, a round of applause for everyone who made it possible for the young people to be here this afternoon. As it relates to the sole purpose of remembering our past so that we move uh, in sequence to our future, our young people are vitally important to make sure that these lessons are never forgotten. So I sincerely appreciate everyone who took the time to make sure that our young folks were present today. Um, Congress established the Days of, Re uh, of Remembrance as the nation's annual commemoration of the Holocaust. This is a time to honor the victims and reaffirm the rights of all people to be treated equally with dignity and respect. As the Days of Remembrance Proclamation signed by Governor Penn states, Hoosiers should always remember the terrible events of the Holocaust and remain vigilant against hatred, persecution, and tyranny. They should always actively rededicate themselves to the principles of individual freedom in a just society and so that we overcome intolerance and indifference through learning and remembrance. And that's why 
and that's what the goal is here today. To learn and remember the period known as the Holocaust and rededicate ourselves to the principles of individual freedom and a just society. Protect human and civil rights so we never experience anything like the Holocaust again. So again, I certainly appreciate everybody for being here. I, I, I sincerely hope you enjoy the program and I hope to see all of you again next year. God bless you. Have a good day. Thank you, Jamal. Thank you. Well, welcome to your Indiana State House. This is your house, and we're so glad to have you here. And I'm here to bring remarks on behalf of Governor Mike Pence. I'm Jackie Sissel, his special assistant. Today we gather to remember the unprecedented prejudice, persecution, and tragedy of a Holocaust. We honor the memory of the victims, the mothers, the fathers, the sons, daughters, brothers, and sisters whose lives were sensibly, senselessly cut short. We reflect on the terror, the heartbreak, and the horrific loss of all which continue to impact families, friends, and loved ones around the world today. And this year we remember those who had the courage to care. At the sight of the injustice unfolding before them, these individuals step into to defend human dignity. While so many remain silent as part of uh, an indifferent majority, fearful of the danger of dissent, these ordinary citizens took action. Their work, whether personally sheltering the persecuted or opposing prejudice, saved lives. In every regard, these men and women are heroes. For their courageous acts and principled character, we honor them today and remember their legacies forever. It is fitting that today, as we remember one of humanity's darkest chapters, we also renew and reaffirm our commitment to ending hatred and prejudice of all types. The Holocaust serves as a tragic reminder that vigilance and strength to defend our fellow man are the utmost importance in guarding against the cancerous spread of hate. And so today, as we honor the lives lost at the hand of unchecked intolerance and anti-Semitism, let us resolve to never forget the heroes who, risking their own lives, took a stand for what is right and just and had the courage to care. Thank you, and God bless you all. And now to bring greetings on behalf of our mayor, uh, Mr. Douglas Harrison, who is the director of the Indianapolis Front Porch Alliance uh, for, here, for the city of Indianapolis. Round of applause. Thank you, Jamal. Yeah, it's okay. Thank you, Jamal. I appreciate the uh, invitation, and as Mayor Ballard does, he's uh, currently in India where the building collaborations and building relationships with businesses and with other organizations there so we can help them come to America and bring more jobs. Amen? Amen. <laughs> but in his stead, he has signed a proclamation for this time to remember the reasons why people call upon America in difficult times when freedom is challenged around the world. I'd like to present this proclamation to Todd Mauer. Todd, if you would join me for a moment. From the city of Indianapolis, office of the mayor, to whom all these presents come. Whereas the Holocaust was a state-sponsored, systematic persecution and annihilation of European Jewry and Nazi Germany, and its coll uh, collaborator collaborators between 1933 and 1945, resulting in the death of six million Jews. And whereas the additional minority groups, including gypsies and people with disabilities, were targeted for destruction for racial, ethnic, and national reasons, while millions more homosexuals, prisoners of war, and political dissidents, and other religious groups, also suffered grievous oppression and death under the Nazi tyranny. And whereas the history of the Holocaust offers an opportunity to reflect on the moral responsibilities of individuals, societies, and governments, and whereas the city of Indianapolis remembers the terrible events of the Holocaust and remains vigilant against hatred, persecution, and tyranny, and whereas the city of Indianapolis is dedicated to the principles of individual freedoms in a just society and continues to work to promote human dignity 
and confront hate wherever, whenever it occurs. And whereas, in memory of the victims of the Holocaust, and in honor of the survivors, rescuers, and liberators, the Days of Remembrance are observed this year from April 7th through the 14th. Now, therefore, Gregory A. Ballard, Mayor of the City of Indianapolis, does proclaim April 7th through the 14th as Days of Remembrance. Todd, on behalf of the city, I present this uh, proclamation to you, and I hope that we continue to remember so that history doesn't repeat itself in that way. Thank you. Thank you. And now to bring remarks and uh, an introduction of the presentation for this afternoon, uh, our very own Ms. Glenda Ritz, who is the Superintendent of Public Instruction for the State of Indiana. Ms. Ritz. As an education leader, my participation in this Holocaust Day of Remembrance is fitting because the education of our young people must include the learning of the atrocities of the Holocaust. Within our U.S. history courses and our world history courses, students learn about the murder of over six million people, most of them of the Jewish faith, many of them children who in their short lives never experienced joy, knowing only hunger, deprivation, and fear. Our children today must learn that hatred and persecution can lead to the slaughter of people and that we, as a society of people, must be vigilant to be sure history is not repeated. In the words of a Holocaust survivor, Alexander Kimmel, he said, we must open our hearts to the plight of the deprived and hungry children of today. By helping them, we shall keep the memory of the perished alive. As students study the Holocaust, one way to express their feelings is to write poetry. I came upon this very simple poem written by a child. I cry for them. During the Holocaust, so many people lost their lives. And I cry for them still today. Many times children teach us the lessons that we must all learn. And today's lesson will be about honoring the rescuers, ordinary citizens who went to extraordinary measures to rescue those being persecuted. I would like to introduce the fifth and sixth grade students from their from Haston Hebrew Academy of Indianapolis and their presentation entitled Rescuers Remembered. Hello, my name is Eliana Franco. There are many Jewish families who have relatives that survived the Holocaust. My family is one of them. My great uncle, Rabbi Abraham Moshe Fick, survived the Holocaust. The story of his rescue and survival is very interesting. Rabbi Fick was learning in the Mary Shiva in Poland when World War II broke out. A yeshiva is a place where Jewish men go to learn Torah, the Bible. The Mary Shiva was one of the greatest yeshivas at the time. Many great Torah scholars were teachers there. When the war broke out, they had to relocate the yeshiva from Poland to a safe place that was unknown at the time. The yeshiva traveled from Poland to Lithuania to Russia, overseas to Japan, and finally to Shanghai, China. During their travels, they faced many obstacles and roadblocks. There were many political events that were in the yeshiva's favor. Diplomacy played an important role in rescuing the yeshiva as well. American rabbis and organizations sent money to aid the yeshiva and help pave the way for the rescue. When they got to Shanghai, they finally felt safe. They stayed in Shanghai for five years until they were able to immigrate to New York. All of the men that learned in this yeshiva were very fortunate for all of the many things that led to their rescue. My, gr my grandfather's name is Yosef Kalmanovich. He lived in a small town in western Russia. In 1941, the Germans invaded and forced all the Jews in his town into a tiny ghetto where everyone was locked inside. Life inside the ghetto was terrible. 
People starved because there wasn't any food and died from disease because there wasn't any medicine. Then he was sent to a work camp where things were even worse. A man he knew helped him escape, even though that man knew he would be shot if the Nazis found out. He fled to the forest where he ran into Russian partisans. At first they thought he was a German spy, but then let them then let him join their band. They hid during the day. At night they raided German trucks carrying soldiers or food or supplies. They blew up railroad tracks so the Germans couldn't send more troops. They blew up telephone poles so the Germans couldn't find out what their troops needed. Somehow, my grandfather survived. He was the only one in his family who did. After the war, he moved to Israel, where he lives today, and where I, his grandson, was born. Hi, I'm Anna Boskobornik, and... Hi, I'm Anna Boskobornik, and this is my story. Recently, I interviewed my grandmother, Faina Boskobornik, who is my age when World War II started. She told me about her escape from the Nazis in 1941. There were so many people who helped her and her family run away. I called them all rescuers. First, there was an army representative who told them, despite common opinion, that they must immediately leave because they were both Jews and family of an army officer. Then, when their cars were bombed and they had to walk the rest of the way, high people took them on their horse-drawn carts so they would have a slim chance to catch an eastbound train before the Nazis captured the city. Those people also gave food to my grandmother and her family. My grandmother was lucky to get out of Kiev early enough and she ended up in deep rural part of Russia. Once again, she was fortunate to find people who helped her and taught her basic survival skills. For example, how to make bread out of grass. That way, she did not die from hunger. I am so glad that there are so many people there to help. Without them, my parents would not have survived the Holocaust. I'm also very grateful to her for sharing such an emotional story with me. It is very important to me. My name is Eliana Taiki, and this is my story. Among the 570,000 Jews that were killed during the Holocaust from Hungary, my family has two survivors. My third cousins, Khan and Sippy, lost their parents, twin sisters, and eight other cousins. Both of them witnessed terrible atrocities and had to steal bread from time to time to survive. A young woman in the concentration camp who lost a child took care of Khan and Sippy and helped them find food. When Khan and Sippy were forced to participate in the death march, they saw people being shot because they couldn't keep up. Fortunately, Khan and Sippy were young enough to have the energy to keep up and survive. When the United States soldiers came to Germany, they gave them clothes and money to move to America. However, they chose to immigrate to Israel. Both Khan and Sippy were very fortunate that they survived when the camp was liberated by the United States Army. When my grandfather, mother, and Hana were touring around a city in Israel called Akko, they stopped at a small museum that used to be a prison. They shockingly found a photo of Khan and Sippy taken the first day they landed in Israel after the Holocaust. We are so fortunate to have relatives that survived the Holocaust so they can pass their remarkable story on to the generations. We all have to remember and never forget the terrible tragedy and the people that lost their lives so that may we never know of such atrocities now and in the future. My name is Ari Atlas. I recently wrote a story about my rabbi's grandfather who survived the Holocaust. The main character of the story, Sam Kaplan, was escaping to the border between Poland and Russia with his friends. Sam needed to bribe the guard to let, to let his friends pass. That's why Sam and his friends got help from the deliverer. The deliverer took 
The deliverer took most of the bribe and handed it over to the guard to let Sam and his friends through, but kept some of the bribe for himself. He was not the only deliverer out there. There were many of them. Usually when someone was going to escape, they would rendezvous with one of the deliverers. They rescued Jews that wanted to escape because they got the guard to let the Jews pass. This is how Sam was able to escape the Holocaust and eventually come to America. Thank you. Some of my relatives were living in Russia when World War II broke out. The Russians were against everything Jewish, and you could only do it in secret. My great-grandfather, Simon, was part of an organization to help keep up Jewish practice. The Russians arrested him and decided that he would be shot. My great-grandfather took a chance and sent a letter to the head of the NKVD, the Russian secret police, a man whose name was Beria. When it came the time for him to be shot, he asked for a few minutes to say the prayers before you're about to die. They gave him permission. During those few minutes, a messenger came from Beria saying not to shoot him, but to send him to Siberia. Even though this messenger and Beria were enemies of the Jews, they were the ones who saved his life. After this, the whole family was sent to Siberia. The war ended and they decided to escape on false Polish passports. The NKVD were aware of this, but they didn't care. Stalin and the NKVD did not want religious Jews in Russia, so they let them go. In the train ride in cattle cars, the NKVD were looking, and they realized that they were chatting illegally. A Polish general came and argued with them for a few hours until they relented and let them go. When my grandfather's brother was telling him the story, he said that I am sure that this Polish general was not simply a Polish general, but was someone in disguise. This general became another link in the chain of people who rescued Jews during the Holocaust era. My name is Nadal Kesari. I am a survivor of the Holocaust. I am a survivor because I am the outcome of my grandparents' difficult experiences and they have made me who I am so I could be here today to share their testimony with you. My grandfather's family lived in Yasi, Romania, while my grandmother's family lived across the border in Viamare, Hungary. Both came from affluent Jewish families. Both came from families who were well respected and involved members of their local communities. During the Holocaust, both became refugees and were forced from their homes. But the different paths these families took perfectly illustrate the power and ability that people had to help save lives. My grandmother's family was told to report to the local authorities in Bayamare. They were rounded into cattle cars and transported to death camps. My grandmother's immediate family of 14 people was sent to concentration camps, where nine of them were killed and their bodies were incinerated. My grandfather's family faced a different fate. In their town of Yasi, in 1941, there were 51,000 Jews. According to Yad Vashem, on June 29, 1941, a day called Black Sunday by the Jews, thousands of Jews were gathered into the courtyard of police headquarters and shot. Over 10,000 Jews were murdered in Yasi. My grandfather and his immediate family of 10 were all able to avoid this massacre because a neighbor warned them to go into hiding and not show up at the police headquarters. They were able to flee to Bucharest, where an network of compassionate rescuers hid them until the end of the war. Two different families who will one day share a deep connection experience very different outcomes because of the willingness or unwillingness to people to make a difference. If only someone had been willing to reach out to my grandmother's family, perhaps they would have also been saved from the nightmare they faced. Six million Jews were killed during the Holocaust. Who was among them? Perhaps the person who had cured cancer, or the next Mozart, or Picasso? When people were willing to sit by silently and, and, not, and do nothing, evil was able to triumph. In our generation, we always say, never again. When we say these words, we all have to remember that no matter who we are, we all have the ability to speak against 
evil, hatred, and injustice and be rescuers in our own way. Never be afraid to help someone. In the end, simple willingness to reach out to a neighbor can be the one thing that can save future generations. In addition to the people about whom you've heard from these children, and the people whose pictures and stories appear in our program, there were Jews who were inspired to fight for themselves. And inspired by the Warsaw Ghetto, the poet Hirsch Glick composed these words. So Glickin was to kiss them let's in bed. Then him and Lion for Stell and Lioteck. Well, Bum and Wet noch unser Eusgebank to show. Es wird a Boyk to Nunze Frot near sein in Do. Never say this is the final road for you. Though leaden skies may cover over days of blue. As the hour that we long for is so near, our steps speed out the message we are here. This song was written without blood and not with lead. It's not a little tune that birds sing overhead. This song a people sang amid collapsing walls. With grenades in hands, they heeded to the call. A zog mit kein molas du gest dem letzten weg. Wenn Himmel in Lion im Verstell und Leue tag. Weil kommen wird noch unser Eus gebänkte Show. Es wird ab hoch tun unser Tod mir seinen Dorf. I'm lighting these candles in memory of six million innocent people who lost their lives so brutally. I'm lighting these candles for millions of children who lost their lives so brutally. I light these candles in memory of my family members who did not escape the Holocaust. And I light these candles for those friends who would have had some wonderful lives if they only had the opportunity. And I also light the candle in hopes that we end this type of hatred and this type of persecution from now on. Over 75 years ago, the killing began, and still to this day, we continue to ask that God protect the immortal souls of all who died during this horrible period of the Shoah. Please rise as you are able. Ach, 
שנהרגו ושנשרפו ושנשחטו My name is Todd Maurer. I'm the president of the Jewish Community Relations Council. I'd like to thank all of you for coming today. I'd like to uh, thank Representatives uh, Klinker and Delaney for being here and the other representatives that are uh, doing their work on the floor right now. Uh, a special thanks to um, Clayton Graham uh, the, and the Martin Luther King Jr. Holiday Commission. Uh, thank you for sponsoring this along with Jamal Smith and the Indiana Civil Rights Commission. Thank you to representatives from uh, Governor Pence and Mayor Ballard's offices. It's, it's nice that this is a group that all comes together and we have we work together. Uh, and uh, I, I appreciate all of your support. Uh, I want to thank the uh, the kids from the uh, Hebrew Academy, from the Haston Hebrew Academy. Uh, you did a wonderful job telling stories today, and that's a very important uh, part of this message. So thank you for coming. I know you were sad to miss school today, but thank you for coming down here. Um, I want to thank uh, Kenna Roger for again lending her beautiful voice to this ceremony. Thank you very much. And uh, I want to thank the Bureau of Jewish Education for their continued education uh, of the Jewish students and other students uh, in our state. And I want to thank uh, Lindsay Mintz over here and David Scalar hiding over here, uh, the professionals who work with the Jewish Community Relations Council. Um, Today I was going to tell a story about a child uh, of the Holocaust named Abe Morton, but because of my discussion with Clayton here, I decided that I was going to talk about what I talked about last year. And I think I have mainly a, a new audience, so uh, those of you who were here last year, uh, please bear with me. But this, students, this is interactive a little bit here. We're going to talk about um, kind of what happened in the Holocaust and what it really is and how you can relate to it today. Uh, in a very simplified sense, it was a form of bullying that was going on. So I'm going to ask everybody here, uh, students and others, if you've ever witnessed bullying or been a victim of bullying, either one, raise your hand. Okay? All right, I see almost every hand up in the room. Now, you can put your hands down. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands for this next question. But I want you to think to yourselves, how many times I witnessed someone being bullied and I watched and did nothing. Or worse, did I join in because it was a cool thing to do or I wanted to be popular. I think you have a responsibility when you see someone being bullied to take the difficult choice and to say and stand up for that person. Because one day you might be on the other end of that. And you'll want someone to stand up for you. And it's important not to let these things go on. Bullying happens in our schools a lot. I have three children in the public school system in Indiana, and I know, I hear stories about kids that get bullied. And I tell my kids, it's important to stand up. 
And it's not easy. It's very hard. But the most important things are hard, not easy. So I encourage the students and the non-students to remember when other groups are being picked on or other people are being picked on, just because of who they are or how short or tall they are or the color of their skin or the shape of their face or how big their hands are, stand up for those around you and say something because you will be respected for it later. So please keep that in mind, especially students, and pass that message along. And again, thank you to all of you for coming today. This is an important remembrance ceremony, and a special thanks to the Martin Luther King Jr. Holiday Commission and the Indiana Civil Rights Commission. Thank you and good afternoon.